Hey guys, welcome back. I am so happy that you're here and I just appreciate you for joining today with me. It's Saturday here. It's a very nice, beautiful Saturday afternoon, but I hope that whenever you are watching this that you are having a wonderful, relaxing, beautiful day as well. Um, but today we are doing part two of the Adnan Syed case that I started, I think, three weeks ago. I'll normally try to do these videos back to back. I just had a couple things that came up and some research I was trying to do before I did part two. But we're doing that today. And then I have, I think, three cases lined up that we will do in future videos. Um, two of them I'm probably going to switch around just because one is very relevant right now and I want to talk more about it because I hadn't heard of it and I think it's very very important to discuss but I will leave my upcoming plans down below I because apparently everybody needs to share my agenda <laughs> but anyway just in case you have feedback anything specific you'd like me to look into or if you have any recommendations of what I should talk about in the future I'm here, I'm ready to accept any sort of suggestions. But, um, like I said, today, part two of Adnan Syed, and we are doing also look number two with the Cosmic Brushes Winter Wonderland palette. So, we'll go ahead, put my hair back, so I'm ready to, uh, to get going. So we left off in the first video, um, kind of leading up to, get my handy dandy notebook. We left off kind of, I think right after the trial ended in 2000. And remember, Adnan had two separate trials because the first one was a mistrial. The second one only took about six weeks. The jury only deliberated for two hours, which I know that some cases are like very like open and shut, like I wouldn't need any extra time, but there was so much that I would be so skeptical of if I was in the jury room where I don't know how it only took two hours, um, but it did. It took two hours and Adnan was convicted. So we fast forward years and Adnan is 18 at this time now sitting in prison for the rest of his life um, since he was convicted. Now something I do want to mention is in between the first trial which was a mistrial and the second trial the prosecution had more time to kind of get their shit together but <laughs> get their shit together in no sort of meaningful way, I should say. Um, because, and maybe I should have touched on this more in the first part of this, but if you go back and look at the case documents, the prosecution's stories and their witnesses and their two lead detectives they had stories and evidence that contradicted each other and that was all over the place. But I don't know anything about Baltimore specifically. I have heard a lot of not great things about the corruption there. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that there is probably some sort of corruption, racial bias, um, faulty police work, dare I say dirty police work, and I say that with having an utmost respect for law enforcement, but so something is not right here, I will tell you that. So let's... So I'm going to be using this row right here, so just in case we don't focus again. But I'm going to start over here with my crease and then keep working over and then um, put some of the sparkly shade in my lid. But, um, so yeah, let's skip ahead to, I think 2013 is when 
Serial came out, which is Sarah Kangag's podcast um, that kind of went over the Adnan Syed case, and that eventually kind of raised awareness to what was going on with it, um, Adnan's failed appeals, and the fact that Adnan had an alibi witness that was never called to testify in his original trial. So we're going to touch on that a little bit as well. But if we go ahead to 2016, and I'm going to be kind of, I apologize, jumping around a little bit because it all ties together to where we are present day. But um, in 2016, Adnan was granted a new trial, and then, I, and I say and then, um, you know, when COVID happened, which was four years after the fact, I do realize, but when the justice system wants to, it moves slowly. So COVID happened, there was a lot of questions about if he was actually going to be um, getting a new trial or not, and I think there was a possible change in some judges. I don't keep up with all the comings and goings of people in Baltimore because I don't live there. But um, finally in 2022, let me get my exact date, September of 2022, there was a motion to vacate judgment on Adnan's case. So, and I'm going to actually pause for a second, finish blending, and then I'm actually going to put up here somewhere the motion to vacate because it is public record and I want to make sure we touch on everything important with it. So, one moment. Okay, so this is the state of Maryland versus Adnan Syed, who is a defendant. Um, this is September 19th, 2022. Uh, the above captioned matter came before the court on the state's motion to vacate judgment on September 19th, 2022. Upon consideration of the papers and camera review of evidence, proceedings, and arguments of counsel made upon the record, the court finds that the state has proven grounds for vacating the judgment of conviction in the matter of Adnan Syed. Specifically, the state has proven that there was a Brady violation. Maryland Rule 4 legal stuff requires the state to disclose without request all material or information in any form, whether or not admissible. That tends to ex I hate this word exculpate <laughs> the defendant or negate or mitigate the defendant's guilt or punishment to the offense charged. Additionally, the state has discovered new evidence that could not have been discovered by due diligence in time for a new trial and creates substantial or significant probability that the result would have been different. Okay, perfect. Um, Adnan was released on his own recognizance. Re <sighs> Y'all, I have studied this like criminal justice system for years and I can't say exculpate or recognizance. <laughs> oh, those are two very difficult words. He was released on his own recognizance and was placed on home detention with GPS monitoring. The state needs to schedule a new date for trial within 30 days of this order. We're going to get into that too. But, so, two reasons why it was vacated. Um, because of the Brady violation and because new evidence has come to light. So, let's discuss that. Okay, so we have a Brady violation, which it was briefly explained that that is when the prosecutor of a state withholds evidence that might be favorable to the defendant um, it may help exonerate them um, in cases when the a defendant is actually guilty then it can just you know obviously cause the jury to ponder you know it, it creates reasonable doubt possibly in this case though Y'all know I don't think Adnan's guilty, so it's just a blatant um, disregard for this young man who 
was sitting on trial and I think I keep going back to that. Adnan was 17 when he was arrested. How, and I know corruption and bad work happens everywhere and you know people obviously don't care like the age of the person that they're impacting but I just cannot imagine looking at a young 17 year old kid you know somebody that could have been one of my students and not feeling guilty for not doing my job that I took focusing that I took an oath to do and prosecutors do indeed take an oath and I know that you know hate's usually on the defense attorneys but you know some people are innocent that are put on trial so we do need the defense attorneys too and there are some good ones out there but that's neither here nor there the prosecutor I cannot remember his first name um, his last name is Yurik he had some sort of documentation like notes that he took from an interview that could have been another possible suspect and it was something damning like he had thought about he was going to kill her it was something that seemed like it could have been premeditated but apparently introducing other suspect other than Adnan and so that was a Brady violation it was some sort of interview that Yurik did um, and I'll be perfectly honest, Yurik has had other Brady violation issues, so there might be more than one Brady violation in this case from the um, prosecutors. But we have the Brady violation and now new evidence has come to light that there are other credible potential suspects and if they would have even given a damn about looking at the evidence more closely. Maybe they couldn't run DNA like they can now. Um, like, you know, we have all the genealogy stuff that makes it easier to find people. But, <sighs> there was unknown DNA on Hayes' shoes that did not belong to her, did not belong to Adnan, and did not belong to Jay. And remember, Jay's the, like, sus friend that we'll talk about here in a little bit. I don't think he's guilty. I just think that he was a pawn for Baltimore PD and the prosecutor's office. But there was an other piece, I'm trying to think back to all of it. There was definitely an other person's DNA that was not any of the three. And of course, if it would have matched um, somebody, you know, I know the argument's been made, oh, it could be somebody in Hayes' family. I mean, obviously she's wearing her you know, shoes possibly around the house, but if it would have been a family member, like that would have been noted. Obviously the, the DNA would have been similar to Hayes. So we have an other piece of DNA that does not belong to the victim or the top suspect or the guy that said he helped the top suspect bury the body so that was never brought up for whatever reason so here's where a big part of my confusion lies okay so that was September 2022 in October of 2023 the the motion was reinstated okay and it's because Heyman Lee's family said that they weren't given enough notice to attend the September 22nd hearing in which Adnan's sentence was vacated. So it was a procedural notification issue. Apparently Hayes' family wasn't told until September 16th, so only three days before. But if I remember correctly, they were able to attend over Zoom. I'm not saying that's the same thing as like being there, but that was a big issue for Hayes' brother. And I'm I'm not mad about that. I would hope that my brother would be upset that he wasn't given the proper notification if something happened to me, but I struggle because, how do I say this nicely? If this were my family member, I would 
probably want to say like let me see this new evidence like let me see and maybe that's kind of where Hay's brother was coming from like what is this new evidence that you speak of tell me more you guys did not lay anything out for me I do think victims families have rights I just hope whenever the new evidence is presented um, on a more major scale that it's looked at fairly by Hay's family because at the end of the day everybody wants justice for Hay if Adnan did not do this, we want the person that did do this behind bars, right? So the whole procedural thing put the whole sentence like back into being reinstated. So all because of this procedural notification thing, um, I will say about this, that is like real shitty of the city of Baltimore to not be notifying appropriately like they should be. So <laughs> y'all see the common theme, Baltimore, Baltimore PD, the uh, district attorney's office, or I guess they might use prosecuting attorney's office. City of Baltimore has some shady shit happening and I hope it gets better, truly. Um, but that's kind of where we are present day. Adnong is still out. Um, I know that I just saw pictures of him celebrating Ramadan with his family and friends. So he is still out. I know that he's teaching at Georgetown. I don't know if he's still being monitored or where we are with that because nothing has been said. And, you know, fine because I don't want anything to happen where he would have to go back to prison. Um, but in the interest of justice, what are we doing? Like, when are we gonna make this new evidence known? Are we interviewing people? It's just been like radio silent on um, the city of Boston uh, court system website. So to give you guys an idea, like in Idaho right now, we have the Brian Koberger case happening um, with the four um, Idaho students that were killed. They have, every time there's a new update, which is frequently, it's uploaded onto the website. The last thing we have from Adnan's case on the uh, court website is from 2022. Like they, ha they don't even have the procedural notification issue updated. and. I just wonder what's going on, to be perfectly honest. I, I don't know. I f kind of low-key feel bad for anybody in the city of Baltimore at this moment, just based on how their legal system is clearly run. But who am I to judge? So that's where we are now. Adon's out. Hayes family was not notified properly. And we don't know if it, this is going to be reinstated. Is he getting a new trial? Is his motion vacated? Or I'm sorry, why do I keep saying motion? Is his sentence vacated? Or like what's going on? Are we going to get to see the new evidence? Is somebody new going to be arrested? Um, you know, I know that Adnan's attorney, I think his name is Justin Brown, is definitely working on this. Um, so he seems like a good one. I, I don't know what the city of Baltimore is doing. So let's talk about the possible new suspects. Um, and this is just complete speculation on my part because I don't, I don't know. Um, so obviously Adnong was the number one suspect back in the day, which I'm, I'm assuming if y'all are watching this, you know that, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. I mean, typically, gentlemen, I don't want to call you out. Typically, it's the men doing the killing. But um, that's always one of the first people to look at. Now, of course, Adnan was looked at because him and Hay had dated pretty recently. Um, so they looked at him, of course, which is fine. I don't, Adnan's never disputed that. Like, he, I've never gotten the feeling that he didn't understand. But, Y'all, how come we did not focus on Hay's actual boyfriend at the time more? Like, where is Don Kleindeist? Where is he? 
and what his mom was his alibi where's the proof that he didn't do it okay i want to know about that because we worked overtime making it look like adnan did it so can we get another uh the her actual boyfriend at the time in here um because two suspects have apparently been found they've not been made public I am just racking my brain wondering who these other suspects are and I say it because yes obviously it could be a serial killer or another rando or you know but I was listening to the truth and justice podcast with Bob Ruff and he makes a good point. The likelihood of this being like a stranger danger attack or a serial killer is so unlikely because of the manner in which she was killed. She was struck over the head with an object, most likely she had blunt force trauma, um, and she was strangled. But there was no like proof that she fought back and if you're being strangled that is just your normal instinct there was nothing under her fingernails um there's no like scratch marks on her neck so bob pointed out that it's likely that she was probably knocked out somebody freaked out and then strangled her um because she would be able to identify them he made such a good point. I'm like, oh, duh. Like, the killer probably knew her. And because she would be able to identify them, it could just be a total, I don't want to say accident, but I don't know if this was premeditated. I don't know if the actual murder was premeditated. I think the process of the burial of the body was because it was, I'm not going to lie, I think it's kind of poorly planned out, but it seems like it was planned out. Um, but the actual murder itself, I don't know that this was like a premeditated thing. Um, I think that I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, but let's say it's the actual guy she was dating at the time. What if they got into some sort of spat and then he just pushed her? But like she would obviously come to and be like so and so like pushed me and knocked me unconscious and then left me for dead like you know so bob made a great point saying that this is likely somebody that she knows and after listening to that part of his podcast i completely agree that i think this is somebody she knows which of course puts adnan back in the ring of could he be the one but Adnan has an alibi. He was at track practice and <laughs> and Asia McClain saw him and talked to him in the library the day that Hay was murdered and around the time that Hay would have been killed. So there's just no proof that Adnan and Hay were seen together after school the day of. He had track practice. She had to go pick up her, I think her cousin it just none of that lines up but it does make me think like the guy she was dating don he had a job but he didn't have to be in school he didn't have to do you know any of that because he was he was a little bit older i am not pointing the finger at old donnie I, i'm not saying that i'm just saying like let's if we think about this logically and it's somebody she knows I think he would have been a way more viable boyfriend suspect than Adnan was, but who am I? And that is just my my two cents. And like I said, I'm not saying go after Don. I'm just saying that if we piece everything together in a more realistic manner, it would point more towards him than towards Adnan. But comment below. Tell me if I'm a crazy person. I'm, you know. I know I can be a Tim Foil Hattie, and you can, you can tell me. Alyssa, I think you're off your rocker. And I, you know what, maybe I am. I'm not mad about it. So, now two suspects. Bob brought up another good point, which is that the person who actually committed the murder 
likely based on lividity stepped away from the body and like had to gather themselves and that happens a lot of times where especially if it's not something that's premeditated you don't have it planned out like oh where am I going to bury this body? If it's something that's truly an accident and not planned and is very heat of the moment, then you would normally take a step away. Like you wouldn't just sit there, like you would distance yourself from the crime that you just committed. So Bob brought up an interesting point by saying, you know, if there's another piece of DNA from somebody, it could be not a co-conspirator to the actual crime but to the burial of the body like you you go get somebody that is would be able to plan better because they weren't just involved in this so i think that's absolutely true i don't know if two people themselves actually committed the murder um of Heyman Lee, but i do think that there was two people that actually moved the body and buried her body in Lincoln Park um, who I don't think Jay did it to be perfectly honest I I, I don't um, Jay is so was looking out for himself the whole time and there's really nothing that makes me think that he would have done this I don't think that he had any sort of relationship with Hay that would have caused them to fight especially since her and Adnan weren't together anymore Perhaps if Hay and Adnan were together, she would want Jay to stay away just because she doesn't want Adnan smoking weed or doing drugs or hanging out with a drug dealer. But there was nothing, nothing that showed that Jay and Hay had any sort of like true like connection separate from Adnan and Jay having their own friendship. So. I don't think we we can probably keep Jay out of it. I think Alonzo Sellers is sketchy as hell, but I don't think that he did anything. How he knew, I'm, I don't love the story about how he had to use the bathroom and that's how he found the body. Um, maybe he's the co-conspirator that helped like get the body out there, but he felt guilty. But honestly, after Alonzo's testimony, I don't know if he would have been the person to pull that off. So could it be a family member? I don't want to place any sort of suspicion on Hayes' family, like that seems horrifically rude of me, um, but is it a possibility? It could be, and that's the thing, it could be a possibility. I can't say for sure. But I do think it was somebody she knew and somebody she trusted and somebody that could have gotten into a fight with her and they reacted in the heat of the moment. I think Bob made a really excellent judgment call on that. Jason just called him, what was I talking about? Um, oh, I don't want to assume it's somebody in Hayes' family, but um, it's most likely like Bob said probably somebody that she had some sort of you know close relationship with so that makes sense that makes the most sense but we don't know who these new suspects are we just know that there was that DNA on her shoes that did not match Jay Adnan or Hay herself so that kind of leaves us open um, I am hoping that in the next couple of next couple of years I would hope by the end of this year but we have some more information um, I would hope just because this has been this has been dragged out since 2000 when Adnan went to prison originally so that is what we have as far as the new um, like suspects are concerned now as far as if god forbid and i i just cannot see adnan uh adnan's sentence being reinstated i can't see them doing a whole new trial i think that his sentence is ultimately going to end up being vacated altogether 
Um, I know that Hayes family wants some meaningful part of that. But I do think at this point, like maybe that's something that they've been working on with Hayes family. Um, so now Adnong has said that he respects whatever decision is made, which, yeah, that could just be like, ugh, like he's just saying that. But like, I genuinely think that Adnan is a good man who does just want justice and he's had the opportunity to do an, an Alfred plea and he said no because he would have to admit guilt but he would get out of prison so I I just don't see any way that we can keep this man in prison especially if we have new evidence that has come forward so we will see sorry guys quick break to do my eyeliner and eyelashes but we're back all right so let's talk about some of the issues with the original case that if this was reopened that it would be good to you know correct the previous wrongs if this case does go back to a new trial that is Okay, so the first thing that I have read a lot more about since um, I watched the HBO documentary originally is the two detectives that were involved, uh, Ritz and McGillivary. Now, I don't know as much about McGillivary, but Detective Ritz has had four convictions that he like arrested the the main suspect that have since been overturned um and i know that stuff happens but four overturned convictions like for big cases is actually pretty alarming and it does not speak to best police work um i hate judging because i know that that's such a difficult job but doesn't say anything good if you have overturned convictions i think four four major overturned convictions and i think that would make adnan the fifth if that is indeed completely gone through and overturned so doesn't speak to great police work he also I guess before he had a few instances of getting somebody who was about to be charged with some sort of narcotics charge or a drug charge and using them for a separate case as a witness um, and as a witness that gives a false statement. Now I could not find um, a specific example of that but the reason why I definitely believe that could be true is because Jay got a Jay had to say he helped Adnan bury the body but and he ended up doing a plea deal but I think that Jay I mean you can look up Jay's rap sheet Jay does not have a it was not Jay's first time talking to the police and it was certainly not his last so I think it's possible that Jay had some major charges or jail time awaiting him and Ritz kind of gave him an out. Now, I don't know about y'all, but like how many of you are going to like falsely confess to helping to bury a body? And that's what Jay did. He, I believe he falsely confessed to helping Adnan bury a body because I don't think either one of them buried a body. And there was a lot of times, if you listen to the audio of his interview, it's like he's being coached in his interview. Um, is it possible that Ritz was coaching him because Jay actually had no idea what he was talking about because he wasn't there? I think that is highly possible, especially if it seems like Ritz had a possible history of 
doing this, of getting somebody that could, there was, I, let me just back up. If Jay had committed crimes that they had solid evidence that he committed and he was able to help them like fry a bigger fish for instance in this case then I get why he took it but he still had to admit to being an accessory to the burial of hay which is just so crazy to me um but Jay changed his story I think seven times and I just cannot believe this was not addressed harder like I, I don't even the detectives that actually arrest versus the prosecutors like if I was a prosecutor I would be like what, what is this <laughs> what are these seven different stories that you gave me recordings of I would be absolutely appalled like this cannot be my star witness but alas here we are but I don't think the prosecutor was on the up and up either but so yeah, Jay took that plea agreement, um, testified against Adnan, and like I said, if y'all have the the time and the energy and can hold it together better than I did, you could go listen to the transcripts of Jay's um, interviews, but they're very contradictory. It sounds like he's being coached in some, like there's some times where he will apologize or like you can hear him go change his story a little bit um, mid-sentence. He changed the location of where he said he saw Hay's body for the first time multiple times. Y'all, if you're 18, 19 and one of your friends shows you a body, are you ever going to forget where you were? I wouldn't, personally, but Jay's just completely unreliable. With that said, I don't think he's guilty of this crime. I think he's, I think he's guilty for other, you know, other things like perjury and, you know, being a pawn of the system. But I, I don't think that he is guilty of this particular crime, no. Um, but I think that his testimony would really need to be looked at in a much heavier light if this were to go back to trial. But with that said, who even knows where Jay is now? Like I said, he has a pretty lengthy criminal record. So, I mean, he's been, he's been around. People have known where he is, but I don't know if it's known now. And I, for the life of me cannot remember if he actually served any jail time for apparently helping to bury a body but I'm going to guess no because I don't know how he would have ended up agreeing to that now I do know that um, back in the day he maybe would have had to serve quite a, well people now have to serve quite a bit of time for having you know drugs but I think it was probably even worse in you know, 99, 2000. But we would need to address this. Um, we would need to address Adnan's complete lack of a good defense counsel the first time. Um, like I said, he had an alibi witness of Asia McClain and she came forward and she's like, nobody ever asked me to testify on Adnan's behalf. I spoke to him in the library that day, um, you know, she said that she had heard that him and Hay broke up, so she asked him about that. And I saw some people online that said, you have just randomly talked to somebody about their breakup that you heard the gossip about. And I'm like, clearly you've never been in a high school because that is exactly what happens. People break up, like people you're not even friends with will come up to you and be like, oh, we heard. It's a high school, everybody gossips. So I think that's absolutely what happened. And apparently she was not put on the stand because she wouldn't have been a good witness. But like the prosecutor allowed Jay to go on the stand. So why would the defense not, I mean, not at least try to throw her up there. I know that maybe cross-examination would have been difficult, um, but 
I mean, Asia seems like a perfectly competent, reasonable woman. It would be scary for any 17 year old to have to go on the stand to be your classmate's alibi for a murder, but I think she could have done it. And I'm like, you know, disappointed in the incompetence of Adnan's original attorney and I, I get that she was ill, but then you shouldn't have been practicing. Like, that's what it boils down to. You have a young man's life in your hands. So I think, let's see, Jay should be addressed, the incompetent defense, uh, the complete, like, dirty cop behavior from at least Detective Ritz, if not McGillivary as well. Um, the prosecution breaking, a, a, or ugh, the prosecution having a Brady violation, that's huge. Um, no mention of the other DNA that was on Hay, which I'm pretty sure they knew about at the time. I think they knew there was an other random person's DNA, but they didn't mention that. Like, what are we doing? So, um... And we have two evidence pieces that we had the access to when the you know trial originally happened, but well, for some reason we're only now just talking about it. But um, the lividity of Hayes' body. So lividity is like when the blood pools and it's based off of gravity typically. So if you are Let's say, okay, so Jay said that Hay was sitting or like laying in the fetal position almost, okay? So let's say that that was on, well, we'll do how her body was found. She was found on her right side, okay? So that means the blood would pool to the right side of your body because that's like where it would naturally go. Um, but lividity takes about six hours to start setting in but i think for the first and y'all science is not my thing but i think the first um six hours or like maybe first five hours lividity could change so like if you move the body the blood flow can still go from one side to another or up and down um just really depending but it does take a few hours to actually set in but if hay was on her side in the trunk and then on her side in the car, I'm sorry, in the her grave. Um, I hate calling it her grave. Where her body was found, then the lividity would be on the, that right side of her body, but that's not where it was. And keep in mind, according to Jay, Adnan killed Hay and then just a couple hours later, a few hours later, went back and buried the body. The, the lividity does not match up with anything. So it, it's stupid to even like ignore this. Her lividity was found as being her being in the prone position, so her face down. That's how lividity actually set in, and I know there was a lot around her torso. So that's not consistent with how her body was found so that means that sure she was had passed away and was somewhere else for at least six hours laying prone or face down and none of that matches up to what jay said so why are we even what kind of incompetent <laughs> asshole prosecutors let this man be the witness. Like it literally doesn't even match up with the autopsy. Oh, are we going to acknowledge that? Please, somebody tell me. So that needs to be addressed 100%. That should have been addressed in 1999 or 2000 at the very latest, but it wasn't. And then the phone records. Phone records are not how they are now, because you know, like, 
$19.99 is that flip phones still or is that just like one of those big old cell phones I don't know I can't remember what kind of phones were out because I was still pretty young but the cell phone records that the prosecution used were not accurate because they it didn't read the fucking cover page <laughs> I just cannot get over how either all these people are incompetent or they were like really trying their hardest to make sure Adnan was convicted, which I think it's probably a little bit of both, but I think they were just gunning for Adnan. But they have these call records and they're like, these calls at this time put Adnan right in the location of Leakin Park, but those were incoming calls. It was stated on the cover sheet that AT&T sent that you can, they can only be like trusted for the outgoing calls, not the incoming calls. Like, so they can't guarantee that anything from the incoming calls is accurate because we just did not have the technology. So these were two incoming calls though. They just, and it was right in front of their face and either they ignored it or they didn't read everything. So whichever one, they're stupid. They're so, it's so dumb. And I just cannot believe, like I said, I know Adnan had an ill defense attorney at this point, but she didn't catch that. Like, even if she's ill, I work with plenty of attorneys every day. I don't talk to the attorneys. I talk to their assistants, their law clerks, whoever it might be. And, so nobody's looking over all these like facts cover sheets and AT&T put it in there specifically. You can't trust the incoming calls. <laughs> and we just blew past that, we just ignored it. Why not? So that's where all of my, was this some sort of, um, What's the, like, what's that term? Like the pitchfork people coming to get Adnan or was it complete incompetence? Was it both? I really do think there was some, um, I think racism is the right word to use in this. Although I think it's more of like religious prejudice to be perfectly honest, um, in this case. And I think that they just wanted to go after him. There was one quote actually, hold on, let me find it. And this was from the prosecutor as well. There are many young Pakistani males who are jilted lovers who kill their lovers and then go back to Pakistan to be free. What, what a sweeping generalization to just wrap everybody into. But don't, <laughs> Tom, the, the way older white guy could not have possibly done it. It makes me so like, I could punch something. It makes me so mad because like, this is the system that we're supposed to trust. How are we supposed to trust this? And I, I, I just can't even wrap my brain around it. And that's what makes me so upset because we want justice for Hay. We want justice for Adnan. We want whoever did this to be behind bars because they could have been for all these years hurting other women. Like we don't know what happened. We, we don't know who this person is for sure. And what they've been doing the past 24 years, which is just really horrifying to think about. So um, that's kind of where we are now. I would love to know everybody's theories down below. Who do you think is guilty? Do you think it's somebody like none of us even know about that's not even on our radar? Do you think it's for sure somebody he knew? I would love to know. And what do y'all think is going to happen with um, and on having a new trial or just having his sentence vacated altogether. Um, and if you live in Baltimore, 
are they as corrupt as I'm making them out to be? And I'm not saying that this is every... This is not to be every cop, every detective, every prosecutor, every defense attorney. There were so many people doing the wrong thing in this story, but it ultimately led to ruining somebody's life. And that is just sickening to me that we had so many people part of this. And I'm not leaving Jay out of this either. I think Jay was used as a pawn. But he was also willing to throw somebody under the bus to save himself. And did he actually save himself? Since this has all happened, I know that he's been accused of at least beating up one girlfriend. So, did he even save himself? Like, what, what benefit did he end up getting out of all of this? So, would love to know everybody's thoughts. And as far as the makeup, um, I've done my past two makeup looks with the Cosmic Brushes Winter Wonderland, or yeah, Winter Wonderland palette. Um, I did like a purpley look last time, and today I was going for green, but we ended up getting more of a, a blue, tealy vibe, um, just because that's how the colors kind of um, blend with my skin tone, but I really like the way it turned out. Um, I'm just trying to find a little bit of lip oil somewhere. I'll do this elf lip oil. Because I have come to terms with the fact that on a day to day basis, I'm just not a lipstick girly. I am lip oil and lip gloss all the way, but I do have like my two Gucci lipsticks that. I just adore and I will never stop wearing um, but those are more of like special occasion I guess um, but yeah this is the, the final outcome I'm pretty dang satisfied with it so um, I, ooh, I think Cosmic Brush is restocked. This is just the, uh, little flap, but I will see if this has restocked, if we're going to restock, um, but I'll leave all that information below, as well as everything else I put on my face, and yeah, I would love to hear your opinions below about Adnan's case, what do we think happened to Hay, and how can we ultimately get justice for Hay in the end, because that will always be most important um getting justice for the the victim of the crime which is hey in this case and oh yeah also tell me do y'all think that her family had enough notification time to be part of this or how do you think the court system could do better with that so with that said that's the end of this video and i'll see y'all next week bye